Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll introduce a new topic that is infrared spectroscopy. So although already we know what is a spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is nothing but interaction of electromagnetic radiations with substance. So infrared spectroscopy is about infrared radiations. Here infrared radiations undergoes interaction with given matter. That means they undergo interaction with given unknown substance and helps us to learn about the structure of the compound. That means here we can know which bond is strong in the given organic compound and we can determine which functional group is present in the given compound. So what happens when IR radiations absorbs by the molecule? When a molecule absorbs IR radiations then transition takes place from one vibrational level to another. Here the transition involves from one vibrational level to another. You can see here one level to another level vibrations are taking place. So we know already each vibrational level consists of rotational levels. Okay, so inside each vibrational level you can observe many rotational levels also takes, uh, are there. So inside the rotational levels also involves the transitions. Hence we can say this as a vibrational rotational spectroscopy. So as the absorption of infrared radiations brings the changes in vibrational and rotational energy levels, we call this as a vibrational rotational spectroscopy. Now the infrared region consists of three main parts again. So we can divide the infrared region into three different parts. One is near infrared region, second one is middle infrared region and third one is far infrared region. So new near infrared region is 0 0.8 microns to 2.5 microns. So infrared radiations can be expressed in lambda and wave number also, wavelength or wave number. So wavelength can be expressed even in microns or centimeters or nanometers. So here it is expressed in microns. You can clearly see near infrared region consists of 0 0.8 microns to 2.5 microns. Middle, in, middle infrared region, this is also called as fingerprint region. It is from 2.5 microns to 15 microns. And next you can see far infrared region. Okay, far infrared region is from 15 microns to 200 microns. Okay, so if I convert this into wave number, this is uh, near infrared region wave number units 12, 12,500 to 4,000 cm inverse near infrared region and middle infrared region is from 4,000 centimeters to centimeter inverse to 667 cm inverse and far infrared region is from 667 cm inverse to 50 cm inverse. Okay, so wave number formula already know wave number is equals to 1 by wavelength in centimeters. So if this wave number 2.5 microns can be converted into centi centimeters means 2.5 into 10 to the power of minus 4 centimeters. So mu bar is equals to 1 by, I am substituting this 2.5 into 10 to the power of minus 4 centimeters. If I calculate this, I will get 4000 centimeter inverse. So 2.5 microns, when we convert this into wave number, I am getting 4000 centimeter inverse. So in this way, you can convert all these wavelengths into wave numbers by using this formula. Let us see the types of vibrations. So what is a vibration? So we know that each atom in a molecule connected by the covalent bonds. You can observe the covalent bonds and these uh, round shaped balls indicates the atoms in a molecule. So when we, when we pass uh, infrared radiations, these uh, uh, bonds vibrates front and back. So when they are vibrating front and back, it is indicating that as a stretching. You know how spring stretches from front to back. Okay. So when they are moving up and down, when they are moving, when these bonds are moving up and down with respect to the central atom, then it is called bending. Okay, let us see about stretching first. So in this type of vib vibration, the distance between the two atoms increases or decreases, but atoms remains in the same bond axis. There is no change in the bond length. There is a change in the bond length, but not bond angle. So here, the atom stretches front and back. Okay, and the distance between the two atoms increases or decreases. While stretching, while we are stretching, this distance may decrease or increase. Okay, but there here especially you must observe that there, while we are stretching the bond, there is a there is a change in the bond length. 
not the bond angle. The bond angle means this angle will not change. This uh, is called bond length. So there is a variation in the bond length but not bond angle. Okay. So you can see the two types of stretching. One is symmetric stretching. Another one is asymmetric stretching. So if we stretch the two atoms in the same direction. You can see I am stretching the two atoms to the front direction. Okay. Otherwise if I stretch the two atoms this side back direction then it is called symmetric, symmetric stretching okay for example let us see this point if i stretch one atom front direction if i stretch another atom to the uh, back direction okay that means one is another one direction another one is different both are in different directions then it is called asymmetric stretching okay so this is about two types of stretching uh, vibrations let us see the second type of vibration that is bending in this type of vibration, the position of atoms changes with respect to the original bond axis. Okay, that means uh, we'll move uh, this uh, atoms to inside or backside, outside, inside or outside sometimes. Because of this, the position of atoms changes. So there is a change in the bond angle. So when we are moving, this angle changes. Bond angle is nothing but dist the distance between the two bonds here. This bond angle changes when we are moving the atoms up and down. Okay, this, bond, this bending is of two types, in-plane bending and out-plane bending. Okay, in-plane bending, the atoms of, are bending towards the central atom and remains in the same position. Okay, so here the atoms undergoes bending in, this, undergoes bending in the same plane. Okay, for example, if, uh, you are, let us see the types of in-plane bending. One is uh, scissoring, another one is rocking. Scissoring means two atoms bends inside like a scissor if you are taking scissor two atoms are bending inside okay so we are moving the two atoms in opposite direction okay rocking means uh, the two atoms moves in same direction you can see these two are moving in same direction okay scissoring uh, is like a scissor you can bring the two atoms together to the inside plane so here these two are going in same direction undergoes rocking in same direction so out plane bending here the two atoms does not remain in the same plane either do they move up of the plane or otherwise they move down of the plane there are two types of out plane bending one is wagging another one is twisting so wagging in this type of uh, bending the two atoms move up or these two atoms moves down okay with respect to this central atom Okay, twisting. Here one atom moves up, another atom moves down. Okay, for example, for example, if you are taking this as a plane, my hand as a plane, here you can observe these two, these two atoms here. If these two atoms move up of this plane, okay, then it is wagging. They can move down of the plane like this, okay. So now if, if you observe the twisting, one atom moves up, another one is moves down. So if this is a plane, one atom moving up, another one is moving down. Okay. That is called twisting. So this, this hand can be imagined as a plane. Okay. So this is completely about uh, stretching and bending vibrations.